radicalization from my research and many others, Muslim, non-Muslim academics, does not take place in the mosques. They take place in other spaces which we do not know or we do not visit or we do not engage or challenge with. What we find is that people are not being radicalized in the masajid, in the mosques, as Dr. Abdulhaq Baker mentioned. They are being radicalized in other spaces. And therefore, it is counterproductive when we have statutory agencies or government <laughs> agencies that are surveilling the masjids, making people feel uncomfortable to go to the mosque as if they are criminals because they attend the mosque frequently. This is counterproductive. It is in the mosques that people are learning the true teachings of Islam and being prevented from being radicalized and in other instances being de-radicalized after they have fallen into whatever uh, doubts that they have, made, that they have come across uh, about the religion. Therefore, because they are not being radicalized in the mosque, we need to look at it because they are being radicalized. People are becoming extremists. Where is that happening? Studies show that that is primarily happening online. That this is something that is happening through the internet. And therefore, it is our belief that the most effective approach to dealing with uh, radicalization and extremism today and these days and times, it's not to write an article uh, where we debunk certain myths and put that on the internet or tweet out some things or, 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 or you know, make a video for YouTube. What it is going to require is that a people, tens, maybe hundreds of Muslims are trained in how to engage with the people in those spaces on the internet. Uh, the authorities know where <coughs> those spaces are. Those spaces are monitored. We need to be given access to those spaces so that we can engage with those people who are uh, taking on this extremist ideology. We need to be able to train a number of other people. And what is it that they are using? Yani what, what verses from the Quran, what teachings from the Hadith of the Prophet Muhammad are they using in order to uh, convince people that their way is the right way. And I'm, and I'm gonna say this as a side, we don't believe that most people are radicalized initially through theological attempts or, or, or through the Quran and the Sunnah. Most of them are radicalized through uh, you know, political grievances. Look at what they are doing to the Muslims in this place. Look at what's happening to our brothers and sisters in that place. What about Palestine? What about the, none of that is, is then what happens, as we all know, political grievances are temporary. Sometimes that, you know, that, that problem may go away. How do we concretize and, and cement these people once we've gotten them in our grips? This is when those who have experience are able to now come and use those initial grievances, flip them around, bring verses from the Quran that now cement this person and give them a permanent you know, existential threat. And now they believe that that this is the way, uh, uh, that, that, that the way forward. This is the way we correct things, all right? And this is how they become radicalized and stay radicalized, not just how they become radicalized. So we believe that the best approach to, to, uh, to deal with that and to address that threat is access to the rooms, the spaces where these people are so that we can engage them one on one. That top-down approach that we're going to throw out an article or write a polemical you know, report, though that may appease the, the, our senses and the, and the masses, that's not going to be the way uh, that we effectively uh, deal with extremism and radicalization. And Allah truly knows best. And I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you. I do think that we have to, again, begin to learn how to 
identify when a person is becoming radical and learn how to engage them in the space that they are in because they're not becoming radical in schools. They're not becoming radical in the messages. They are becoming radical in their spaces that they've created for themselves online. And we need access to those spaces so that we can engage them one on one. You know, a lot of this is happening online. It's, that's a very difficult uh, arena to kind of focus in and to address. I would say that um, we, we view ourselves uh, at TAM, we view ourselves as medical practitioners, in a sense. Um, whereas medical practitioners focus on people's bodies, uh, we are looking at people's minds and souls, if you will. Uh, and what we want to do as a whole is to prevent. We believe that the best medicine is prevention, that we want to prevent people from ever having a misunderstanding or an extreme uh, understanding or ideology as it relates to their understanding of Islam. We also recognize that no matter how much uh, you know, we seek prevention, that some people will become diseased. They will be infected by extremism and radicalization. And therefore, that is our job we see to help uh, those people be treated. And what we talked about today and what will be talked about throughout today are, are different approaches, but one of the main approaches that we find to be effective is actively engaging those who have been affected by radicalization by actively engaging them, not by shooting information at them or giving them one-liners or videos that they can watch that will help deconstruct uh, whatever theological underpinnings that they've had that have led to their understanding. Now, we believe that we are going to have to train, you know, tens or maybe hundreds of people uh, who can look at why or, or from a theological perspective what it is that they're doing, uh, what verses they are looking at from the Quran, what hadith they are looking at from the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to look at that, to deconstruct those arguments and to learn how to engage these people uh, in their space.